there seems to be a common thread among the writings and the sermons of the great saints, especially those of the priests. And that common thread is sin, the most commonly fallen into sin, the most dangerous kinds of sin, not because necessarily they have some cataclysmic effect on society, but the most dangerous of sins are the ones that lead the most people to hell, regardless of what Francis might have to say on that as of late. The most dangerous one, according to Our Lady at Fatima, are the sins of the flesh, of impurity. So today I have for you a homily, or rather a couple of, they were the writings of St. John Bosco recounting the visions he had. I've covered his visions before, and I'm slowly working my way through a collection of them for you. And today he warns us about the most dangerous of all sins, so pay heed. The Precious Handkerchief of Purity A Vision of St. John Bosco On the night of June 14th, I had no sooner fallen asleep than I was startled by a heavy blow on the bedstead, as if someone had struck it with a board. I jumped up and immediately thought that it was lightning. I looked around but found nothing unusual. Convinced that I had most likely been dreaming, I again tried to sleep. Hardly had I begun to doze when a second blow startled me awake. This time I got out of bed and searched everywhere, under the bed, under the desk, and in the corners of the room, but I found nothing amiss. Commending myself to God's safekeeping, I blessed myself with holy water and slipped into bed. It was then that my mind began to wander, and I saw what I am going to tell you. I seemed to be in a church pulpit, about to start a sermon. All the boys were seated in their usual places, looking up and waiting, but I had no idea what to preach about. My mind was a complete blank. For a while I stood there dumbfounded and dismayed. Never had anything like this happened to me in all the years of my ministry. Then suddenly the walls and the boys disappeared and the church turned into an immense valley. I was beside myself and could not believe my eyes. What's this? I questioned. A moment ago I was in the pulpit in church and now I am in a valley. Am I dreaming? What's happening to me? I decided to get going, hoping to meet someone and find out where I was. After a while, I came to a stately palace. Its many balconies and broad terraces beautifully harmonized with the building and landscape. In front of the palace, there was a large plaza. In a corner at the right, many boys were crowding around a lady who was handing out handkerchiefs, one to each boy. On taking theirs, the boys walked up to the terrace and arranged themselves along the parapet. Drawing close to the lady, I heard her say to each lad as she gave him a handkerchief, do not unfold it when it is windy, but if you are surprised by wind, turn it once to the right, never to the left. I kept looking at those boys, but then and there I did not recognize any of them. When all the handkerchiefs had been distributed, the boys were all lined up on the terrace in complete silence. As I watched, one boy took out his handkerchief and unfolded it. Others followed his example and soon had them out. The handkerchiefs were very large and exquisitely embroidered in gold. On each lengthwise there was written in gold, Regine Virtutum, Queen of Virtues. Suddenly a soft breeze came out of the north, that is, from the left. Gradually it grew stronger, then it became a wind. Some of the boys immediately folded their handkerchiefs and hid them, while others turned quickly to the right. Others instead left them exposed and flapping in the wind. Meanwhile the disturbances gained force, while ominous clouds gathered overhead and darkened the sky. Lightning flashed and thunderous frightening rumbles rolled across the heavens, followed by hail, rain, and snow. Unbelievably, many boys still kept their handkerchiefs flapping in the storm. The hail, rain, and snow battered them mercilessly. In no time they were riddled with holes, torn beyond recognition. I was stunned, not knowing what to make of it. However, I was in for still greater shock. As I got closer to the boys for a better look, I recognized every one of them. They were my own oratory boys. I hurried up to one of them and asked, what in the world are you doing here? Aren't you so-and-so? Yes, he replied, I am. And then, pointing to several others, he added, so-and-so and so-and-so are here too. I then went over to the lady who, was, who had distributed the handkerchiefs. Several men were around her. What does all this mean? I asked them. The lady herself, hearing my question, turned to me. Did you not see the inscription of those handkerchiefs? She asked. Well, yes, my lady, I replied. Regina Virtutum. Do you understand now? Yes, I do. All those boys exposed their purity to the wind of temptation. Some, on realizing the danger, immediately fled. Those are the boys who folded and hid the handkerchiefs. Others, taken by surprise and unable to fold their handkerchiefs, turned to the right. 
These are the boys who promptly have recourse to prayer when in danger and turn their backs upon the enemy. Others instead kept their handkerchiefs open to the full blast of temptation and fell into sin. Saddened by this sight and the realization that so very few of my boys had kept themselves pure, I nearly burst into tears. When I was able to control myself again, I asked, Why did even the raindrops and snowflakes riddle the handkerchiefs? Aren't they symbols of venial sin? One of the men replied, Don't you know that where purity is concerned, non dater par vitas martivae, there is no matter that is not considered to be grave. Nevertheless, don't be downhearted, come and see. He turned to the balcony, signaling to the boys with his hand, and shouted, Right about face! Nearly all obeyed, but a few did not budge. Their handkerchiefs were torn to shreds. I noticed, too, that the handkerchiefs of those who had turned to the right had shrunk and were covered with patches. They had no holes, but were pitifully shapeless. These boys, the lady explained, had the misfortune of losing their purity, but they had regained God's grace through confession. Those few who did not stir are those who persist in sin and perhaps will go to perdition. Finally, she said to me, Nemene dicite, sed tonctum admone. Tell no one in particular, but give only a general warning. And now a second vision on the same subject, entitled A Horned Cat. Two or three nights ago, I had a dream. Would you like to hear it? You are very dear to me, and so you are always in my dreams. I seem to be in the playground with you swarming around me. Each one held a rose, a lily, a violet, or both a rose and a lily, or some other flower. Suddenly a huge, ugly cat, black as coal, appeared. It had horns, eyes as red as live coals, long, sharp claws, and a disgustingly swollen belly. This ugly beast edged stealthily close to you and swiftly clawed your flowers to the ground. When I first spotted this hideous creature, I was terrified, but to my astonishment, you seemed totally unconcerned. Seeing it creep towards me to knock my flowers down, I immediately turned to dash off, but someone stopped me. Don't run away, he said. Hasten to tell your boys to raise their arms up high above the beast's reach. I did as he told me. The monster tried hard to jump up, but its weight made it fall back clumsily to the ground. The lily, my dear sons, symbolizes the beautiful virtue of purity against which the devil wages endless war. Woe to those who keep their flowers low. The devil will snatch it from them. Such are those who pamper their flesh by overeating or eating between meals or who shirk, who shirk work and idle away at their time, who are fond of certain conversations or books, and who shun self-denial. For goodness sake, my children, fight this enemy or it will enslave you. These victories are hard to win, but Holy Scripture tells us the means to use. This kind of devil can be cast out only by prayer and fasting. See Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Raise your arm and your flower shall be safe. Purity is a heavenly virtue. Whoever wishes to safeguard it must raise himself heavenward. Prayer is your salvation. By prayer I mean your morning and night prayers, devoutly said, meditation and holy mass, frequent confession and communion, sermons and exhortations, visits to the Blessed Sacrament, the rosary, and your school duties. By prayer you will rise heavenward. Thus you will safeguard the most beautiful of virtues. Try as much as he wants. The devil will not be able to snatch it from you. Sobering words from, from St. John Bosco. I think we've all heard that the vast majority of confessions priests here from both men and women are related to the sins discussed here. I've heard Father Ripperger say it. I've heard parish priests say it. Not without, you know, they don't go and violate the seal of confession or anything, but they too tell us that these sins are so widespread that it's almost numbing to hear the <laughs> these sins recounted. Again, these are very sobering thoughts. Perhaps we should take these more seriously in our own life. Let me know in the comments if you know of, you know, accounts of other people who have, how they've gotten these sins out of their life, what they've had to do. I imagine that it's very difficult. So let me know in the comments, please. Um, maybe that's be something in 2022 everybody works on, getting these sins rooted out of our lives. This modern culture, it's a monumental task. Anyway, as always, thank you for listening, and um, please pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.